What's up guys, Danielle here, NeutralSupport.net, bringing you the third installment of making your own mobile business. So you already decided you should do it, that you know who your customers are gonna be. So now we're gonna skip ahead to something cool, getting a vehicle. Let's go. There are lots of things you need to know before actually picking a vehicle. Besides your customers, you need to know your service area, how far are you gonna be driving, what's your budget for fuel and car maintenance, in your area, is it a high traffic area? Do you need to be able to fit in parking decks? So that's a big one. If you need to be able to fit in a parking deck, don't buy anything with a high roof. If you want the big bad accounts from QBP, they have these crazy requirements that you be able to stand up and work inside your vehicle. So if you want that account, you have to have a vehicle that you can stand up in. You also have to have a commercial address. We'll talk about that later in another boring video that's less fun. This one is all about picking a car which is gonna be cool. QBP wants you to be able to stand up inside your vehicle to work, to be to get an account. I'm sure they're not the only ones, but they're the ones that come to mind. That might be something that you also just want. Weather protection built into your actual vehicle can be a really useful thing that keeps you protected. Do you want to transport bikes? If you wanna transport bikes, how is that vehicle going to transport them? Will you be able to work when it's raining? Will you be able to transport bikes when it's raining? Do you even wanna be outside when it's raining? These are all good questions. When you're making your budget, keep in mind, buying the car is one thing. If you buy used, you might have to get it fixed, depending on what kind of used you buy, but that's fine. But keep in mind in your budget, you'll also have to outfit this vehicle to do what you want it to do. It probably won't come exactly how you want it unless you just have bunches of money, which like we talked about before, if you have bunches of money, pause the video, go call your guy, have him make you a van, they'll get it done for you. Call VeloFix. You can do a lot of stuff yourself if you have the mind to do it. You can save a lot of money up front and save that for later when you have more money to spend. In the beginning, a lot of times you won't have a lot of money. So you try to do things as well as you can in the most functional way you can. And right at the outset here, I'd say everybody kind of assumes when they think mobile bike repair, they think Sprinter Van now, probably because of all of these franchises making that the most popular thing. I have a Sprinter Van. I started with a Sprinter Van. So you can do anything you want. The, any vehicle can get you from point A to point B with tools, can get the bikes fixed. You can put it all in a Ford Taurus. It doesn't matter necessarily, but if you're trying to plan it out and you wanna do it a certain way, there are lots of different choices. So we're gonna go through some of them and there's some really creative stuff out there. So hopefully I can walk you through it. Let's start with number one, numero uno, the Sprinter van. So Mercedes, Dodge, Freightliner, Whatever color you get it in, the Sprinter van has that sweet Mercedes engine. It's diesel. You're going to get about maybe 17-ish miles to the gallon, give or take, depending on how you're doing, what kind of driving you're doing. Based on my experience over the last nine years driving one, that's about right. I spend about $1,000, $1,500 a year on maintenance. That waxes and wanes, depending, but tires are pretty pricey because they are truck tires. They're bigger size. I do spend extra money on tires because going through windy roads, any of these vehicles, if you're going through windy roads all the time, you'll wear the corners right off of the outside of the tires. So think about that when you're picking tires. I spend extra money on tires every time so that I don't have to replace them as frequently. I was burning through those original Continental tires that it had every 20,000 miles. Crazy stuff. But now I get maybe 40 or 50 out of a set, which is pretty good. The Sprinter is perfect for the QVP standing room requirement. So you can work inside of it if you set it up in the way that you can work inside of it. The way that I set mine up was a lot more modular, a lot less specific. I've seen a lot of setups where the stand is actually physically mounted inside. You could do that. You don't have to, but there's lots of room. It has plenty of room to stand, even if you're six feet tall, there's plenty of room. Perfect vehicle for that kind of stuff. They are kind of pricey. So $65,000 for a new Sprinter is a lot. You can go with something else. You can get a used Sprinter van. Um, keep in mind when we talk about Sprinter, the other options are like uh, Transit has a high roof. There's a Nissan with a high roof. So you don't have to get the Mercedes engine traditional Sprinter. There are gas versions of a similar truck. It just happens to be the most well-known quantity or well-known option that people tend to lean towards. So if you have gobs and gobs of money to throw at this, there are lots of upfitters that can set up your Sprinter van with cool cabinets and benches. And I'll try to throw up some pictures of stuff here, but 
just tons of upfitters that are willing to take your money and make something cool. Look at the Beeline and Velofix, the old vans that they had back in their heyday, back when they were successful. You could also use it as a camping van or a race van if you wanna, if you keep it kind of modular on the inside, you can pull everything out of it and use it for other stuff. If it is your van and you wanna have multi-purposes. I ended up being able to afford it by getting an equipment lease. So when you're talking about car budget, also think about how creative you could be with funding. So I couldn't actually get it with a normal car loan because my credit was non-existent, I was too young. So I ended up getting an equipment lease, which just meant that I was buying equipment for my business and they let me buy the van at the end of that lease for a dollar. It worked out. The thing that's kind of tricky about that is there's no early payoff. So if you, all the payments are set ahead of time. So you can't physically pay it off early and save any money. Because it is a lease, you have to pay the remainder of the lease. You are just paying what you agreed to pay in the beginning, but if you end up with like a big windfall, you still owe them the same amount of money. All diesel vehicles after 2008 have DEF fluid. So they have diesel exhaust fluid systems. That tends to be the trickiest bit with diesel vehicles, especially because those systems are the things that malfunction more than others. 2008, if you want a sprinter, but you don't want to deal with DEF fluid and diesel exhaust stuff, just get a 2008. That's way easier said than done because everybody knows that. So 2008 sprinters are also getting older and older as time goes on. So it may not be worth it necessarily, but just keep in mind 2008, last time there was no DEF system in the Sprinter van. Also keep in mind the DEF system's under the emissions warranty, so you probably won't have to worry about that anyway because most of the time, if those things are gonna malfunction, they malfunction early, so you can use the warranty to actually get them taken care of. I know from experience. Abandon the Sprinter van. Step in the step van. So there's this cool thing that we all see all the time that is a step van. We see them with UPS, we see them with FedEx, Aramark, all of these sweet delivery companies, Milk, which isn't delivered anymore, but if it was, it'd be in a step van. They have these super cool trucks. There are actually some really cool mobile shops that are in step vans. On the fly mobile bicycle repair, Joe's shop, that step van is like as big as my entire brick and mortar store. It's huge, it's outfitted, he's got all kinds of stuff in there. It's beautiful, you can work inside of it. It's just a thing of absolute remarkable engineering. That setup is awesome. It probably wasn't cheap. He did buy that step van. You can buy them new. You can also find step vans pretty used. Joe reported it's about 10 miles to the gallon, so maybe a step van. Not the most fuel efficient thing if that's really factoring into your business plan. If you have to get from point A to point B and point B is way far away all the time, then maybe 10 miles to the gallon is going to really rack up depending on your business model, but the step van is awesome. Super tall, super long, you have so much space, it's unbelievable. So a new step van is like 50 to $80,000 new, currently. You can buy them in gas or diesel. The cool thing is, like we were talking about, FedEx, everybody has been using step vans, so you can buy these old ones used for a lot cheaper, fix them up, get a diesel one especially and fix it up because the longevity of a diesel motor is kind of awesome and something that I would really take into account. But step van, I actually really wish that I had a step van. I have a Sprinter, I love it, but gosh, a step van, they're so cool. So that's a good option if you need something big. If you're trying to squeeze into tight spaces, again, no parking decks with a step van, but also like city parking, things where you're gonna have to be street parking a lot or parallel parking, you think you're gonna be in areas that have a lot of compact spaces, the step van's gonna be pretty rough. I have found that in a commercial vehicle, you can almost always put your hazards on and park just about anywhere, and nobody bothers you because they assume that you know what you're doing, that you have permission to be there, you basically never get a ticket, so keep that in mind, but parking and driving and maneuverability, you don't wanna be constantly like getting in little fender benders because everything is super tight and you're just trying to make it through. But a step van, if you're willing to drive something big, step van, awesome choice. So you said, I'm willing to drive something big. Box truck, another option. So box trucks are like taking a step van space and moving it to the next level. Now, most box trucks that you find used will not have the back connected to the front. I'm sure some of them do, but usually it's a separate box. So think about lighting, 
running electricity, things that you need to get into the back, cross that bridge when you come to it. But the box in the back gives you a lot of space. You can upfit it similar to the step van. You can make an entire store in there if you want to, because it's going to give you so much room. Now we've all seen U-Hauls and things like that. So I'm sure you can get a new box truck is probably exorbitant, but you can get a used box truck for probably like 10 to $12,000. If you know where to look, if you're willing to look for older ones, might need to be fixed. The average box truck, since a lot of them are gas, the lifespan's only about 150,000 miles. So keep that in mind when you're looking at them. You don't want anything with super high mileage because it's gonna need a lot of repairs and you're also going to run out of motor before too long and then you'll have to buy another one. So if you spend all your time upfitting this thing and then it dies, that's gonna be a total pain. Box trucks get like six to 10 miles per gallon so keep that in mind as well. With fuel economy, a box truck may not be the best thing. Now they do make real tiny box trucks. Those probably get better fuel economy and they'll have lots of room. Some of them can pass the Q test. Some of them probably can't, but box truck, cool idea. People are doing it. Look at pedaling fools with David. Lots of cool setups in box trucks. So the fourth option we're gonna talk about is a car, any car. Is the little Subaru really cheap and ugly? literally any car. So you can take tools if you don't care about QVP or you do, but you don't have enough money to meet the requirements of having something you can stand up inside. That's not the end of the world. Get a car, get a Subaru Outback or a Honda Fit or something, get a wagon. So I've actually worked out of a Sprinter since day one, but when the Sprinter is not available, I'm in a car. So I had a Honda Fit that could fit bikes all over it and all my tools on the inside. I worked out of that for months because the van actually got damaged in a hailstorm pretty bad and it was in a body shop getting all the dents knocked out of it and painted and all this stuff. So when that was gone, I was in a Honda Fit. I didn't feel it, it was awesome. It worked great. Weather is a little bit of an issue, but they make pop-up tents for a reason. I was able to make it through. It also was really nimble to get through traffic. Now that we have more off-road needs with driving, I actually have a Subaru Outback, same deal. Bike racks all over it, fits all the tools. It's even bigger on the inside than the Honda Fit was. You could do a truck with a bed topper. You could do lots of different things that are just cars. Just put your tools in the car, drive from there to the person's house, brand the car. So if you do something like a any kind of vehicle that you have, you want to make sure that you professionally brand it so that it looks good. But a car can look just as good as a sprinter van, as anything else pulling up, as long as you do it right. Just make it look professional. Have your tools organized very well. Don't get hung up on needing this grand vehicle. Just get the vehicle that you can to do the job you need to do. And so I'm putting in my little pledge here for the car. You could get something really fuel efficient, really low maintenance, cost you nothing, drive around, be successful, save all your money, someday buy a Sprinter 4x4 because that's everyone's dream and none of us have $100,000 laying around, but a car. There are just so many good options. So don't write off a car just yet until you make your full business plan and you know your budget. But once you know your budget and you know if you can afford exactly what you want or if exactly what you want makes sense. Sometimes a car just makes sense. So think about cars like that. Think about wagons, SUVs, things that you can buy with normal person amounts of money and then just brand the heck out of it. Get it wrapped, get some decals made, make it look great, be professional. It won't matter if you're showing up in a car or a big fancy sprinter. If the work you're doing is right, you're being professional and it looks the part. So. One vote for car. So you're thinking, I wanna get into mobile bicycle repair because it's so sustainable and bikes are so sustainable, but man, driving around so much is such a waste of fuel. Solution, what if you rode your bike to the bikes to fix them? Your truck up front and we can get started. Oh, we're right there. Yep, we got a great spot. We do everything by bicycle. Yep, your bike movers. Yeah. yeah. So that's a thing. They. Build a sweet cargo bike, maybe have a pop-up tent with them, but in general, like a completely sustainable, no fuel costs added, no maintenance costs, no insurance for that vehicle. You still need insurance, but not for the vehicle. Awesome, what a cool idea. So check out Nice Bike from Finland. Sweet rig, they have all set up so that they could do mobile in the good season in Finland. So in Finland, 
This model doesn't work necessarily as well because of the extreme weather. So a very limited time that the mobile bike shop on a cargo bike can actually operate. So Nice Bike actually became a cool shop. In its previous formation, it was a cargo bike mobile bike repair business, and that is a super cool idea. So I wanted to just go ahead and highlight that as an option. You don't have to have a car, you don't have to have a license, you don't have to have car insurance, car maintenance costs, fuel costs. Those can all go out the window if you're willing to put your legs to work, ride to the customers. If you live in a highly populated area where you can actually get to your customers that quickly, on a bike, if it's not you know super strenuous, maybe even like an e-cargo bike. Anyway, if you do and you live in a spot where that makes sense, it might be worth checking out if the volume is high enough that it would be worth it to do these five to 10 minute trips on a bike to customers instead of being in a car. In some places, being in a car in a big van or in a big box truck is just gonna slow you down and make you not be able to get to your customers in a timely manner. So the cargo bike thing might be the way to go. Weather's a challenge. So you need to be able to have a pop-up tent or something to protect you, unless you only wanna work on nice days, which I mean, you do you. QBP probably won't give you an account because you can't stand up in that box, but hey, who needs QBP anyway? I'm sorry, QBP. I do use my account, so please don't take it away from me. So my one final entry into vehicles, which I know there are a lot of them, my one final entry is multifaceted. It's anything you can find at your state surplus. So I'm here at the state surplus. So government agencies have to spend their budgets and they also can't just throw away a bunch of cars. So they typically auction off the vehicles that the government has used or seized in these surplus auctions. So I actually went over to our local surplus to take a look at what they had and it was actually kind of awesome. I wish that I needed something because there were some really good choices. So the surplus has tons of stuff, tons of vehicles, available. What they let you do is you can take a key, you can check it out, you can walk out to the car, you can start it. You can't drive it. So some of the variability with the surplus is that you can't actually drive the car ahead of time. So it might have issues that you don't know about. The notes with the car don't always tell you what's wrong with it. They sometimes don't know. There are a lot of cop cars there, probably from them jamming on the accelerator all the time, ruining the transmission, running, basically running the car all the time like cops do, where they have the car just sitting while they eat lunch running. I probably wouldn't buy those like chargers that they have on the lot, but then they have all these sweet like minivans and trailers, trucks, box trucks, ambulances, fire trucks, everything. Let's take a look. So our surplus had lots of choices. There were sweet trucks that had these bed toppers on the back. So the thing about the trucks with the bed toppers is at the surplus, you don't always get all the keys. So you might not be able to actually open the toolboxes. You may have to get a locksmith to rekey everything for you. But the trucks they had there, they had these cool bed toppers with toolboxes on the sides so you can actually store stuff on the outside. The bed topper opened up on the back and actually kind of formed a little overhang, which might be nice and you could argue with QVP if you wanted. Those trucks are cool. They're just four normal truck bodies with bed toppers. They have a hitch already, so you could do a hitch bike rack. You could probably even put a front hitch on those, but with the hitch, you could put a bike rack on. So if you needed to transport bikes, you could do it on the hitch. You could probably also put rails on the bed topper, which I just thought about. It'd probably work. Anyway, it was a cool idea. Those trucks are neat. They have lots of little trucks also, but those trucks with those tool-based bed toppers, you know, probably pretty cheap. Six thousand dollars, six to seven thousand dollars once it's all said and done and the bidding is over. Another option for not caring about QBP is the Econoline van. It's huge, huge. So this is a 2500 van. It's practically like I'm standing up, right? Like, it is crouch your knees a little bit, put the bike on a stand. That's not a big deal. Pretty cool, very spacious, lots of room to make stuff happen, very long. Um, but still fits in a parking deck, which is kind of like the the biggest thing and then just a very simple interior Nothing crazy. This one's in pretty good shape being here makes me want to buy one of these. I don't need any of them the van The transit vans that they have on the property are all these people movers generally but they had a couple that were actually just empty bodies I couldn't actually go inside because the auction wasn't up yet super cool already just a completely open space for you to customize 
tall enough for you to stand up in high roof. So you're already getting that qualification. They're like 12,000 ish dollars after bidding, depending on which one you get. Some of them have more damage than others. Some of them end up in there because somebody tried to, I don't know, drive into a parking deck with one, but you can get some cool stuff. So State Surplus also has things like pull behind trailers. So if you're looking for a pull behind trailer, they do retire those occasionally and they'll have them out in the yard. They had this really big one with a fold down door that turned into a ramp, which was cool. Instead of having the normal opening, it folded down and became a ramp. The trailer itself was big. It didn't have a completely enclosed roof, but that wouldn't be too much work. A pull behind trailer is a fine idea for a bike shop. It might be a little hot, might be a little hard to get power, but then you just get a generator. Problem solved. They had this sweet fire truck pickup truck with toolboxes and a hose reel and a compressor to pressurize the water. That was like a pump on the back. That was pretty cool. And that would be a cool truck to convert. They didn't have any ambulances, which ambulances are cool. There've been a few examples of people using ambulances. Galanon uses an ambulance or did use an ambulance in his mobile rig. It'll play right into all you people wanting to name your mobile business something about being an ambulance or a surgeon or a doctor. Perfect, just get an ambulance. The last ambulance that I saw was about $7,000 at the surplus. That's still not bad, it's pretty cheap. The surplus also sells box trucks. They have plenty of different sizes. The one that I saw today or one that I saw there this time was huge, way too big for most of us, but you could have put like my entire bike shop in it. It was pretty cool. If it was cheap enough, I'd totally buy it. It also, this one in particular was a pretty tall one that had a lift gate. If the lift gate actually functioned, that would also be pretty neat. You could actually pull the bike up into your shop, put the bike back down. This one, the lift gate was up. It, I didn't try to move it, but that was a pretty neat choice as well. We've seen multiple box trucks at the state surplus. They're usually in the eleven to $15,000 range. So we talked about just, you know, anything with wheels. You can get anything with wheels at the surplus. I mean, could you make it work? Maybe. Probably not, but it's pretty cool. I mean, for the right price, anything's possible, right? It's already pre-wrapped, so you're saving money. Put your tools in it, it'll drive you where you need to go. The surplus is a good place to get all kinds of stuff. So not just cars, but they surplus auction off machinery and tools and lawnmowers and all kinds of fun, interesting things that you may or may not need. They also auction off furniture. So one of my first benches was a science table from the local university that was at the state surplus and I got it for $3 and it was very heavy but it stayed completely stable, it was beautiful. Just check out the state surplus. They auctioned off all kinds of things. They auctioned off a plane last month from the Forest Service. Nobody knew if it ran or not, so I don't exactly think I would ever buy a plane from the surplus auction, but hey, if you know about planes, you could get a cheap plane from your state surplus. The kind of car that I'm getting. Yeah? Don't count on it. Why not? Because the Volkswagen Beetle was used by the Nazis. So you're probably nowhere near buying an actual vehicle, but at least hopefully this gives you an idea of the choices because you're gonna be making a business plan and budgeting out your money and trying to figure out exactly how you wanna execute your plan. You may have already thought this out exactly how you want it, but a lot of people don't realize that you can do this from a number of different types of vehicle. You don't have to stick in the mold and get a sprinter and get it outfitted and have it all beautiful on the inside and put an EVT on a pole that never comes out of the shop. Like, you don't have to do that, it's awesome. It is awesome and I love my Sprinter, but you can do so many different things that are going to be cool and very functional and they'll work better for you because you know your area, you know your customers, you know exactly how far you need to drive, how you wanna work, or you at least need to figure out all of those things and then you can pick a cool vehicle. Don't shy away from the sort of unorthodox mobile vehicle. Anything can get you where you need to go with the right amount of planning. Think about the race mechanic vehicles in the tour. It's all Volvo wagons, things like that. They're fitting enough stuff to do what they need to do in those cars and then loading the outside up with bikes, which is cool. And you can totally do that with just about any car. So don't fret too much about not being able to get a sprinter. Think about all your options. Look on the used market Craigslist. 
is awesome. You can find all kinds of weirdo stuff on Craigslist. Sometimes stuff will be more expensive because there are concurrent interests. So sprinter vans are expensive because everybody's wanting to go camping now. And step vans have gotten more popular because people are converting them into food trucks. So a lot of people sell their step vans thinking that somebody with a food truck desire is going to buy them. That might elevate the pricing some, but you can find some really screaming deals on used stuff if you just take the time to look. So hopefully this was a fun little exercise for you where you got to think about your cool new car for your business. I know that that's the fun part is picking out all the cool new stuff and picking out your tools and we'll try to focus on that stuff and mix in that more serious stuff. But if you can use the content from this video to get you through when I'm harping on you about insurance in the next upcoming videos, that's my goal. So hopefully you had fun with this. It gave you some ideas for your business. If you liked it, go ahead and like the video. You can subscribe to the channel. It'll notify you whenever I add to this series, which is cool. We'll keep going, keep planning. Let me know if there's anything in particular you wanna know. Comment below if you have anything to add or if you have a cool vehicle that you use that maybe wasn't focused on here. Like I said, anything with wheels that gets you from there to there to work on the bikes is good with me. Head over to neutralsupport.net. I've got cool swag, hats, aprons, you know, all kinds of stuff. Membership to the site is pretty cheap and that helps me keep making the videos, helps me keep paying my bills. So I really appreciate all of you. You're all great. And as always, I hope you have a good day.